Hello, this is Mike, and welcome to PHP Programming Lesson 35, and this is hooking up your 3D Calculator Part 2. Now, last time we'd run out of time, uh, so we're going to continue and try to get everything hooked up today, and if not, we'll add another uh, part, but hopefully not. Now, what I've been doing is actually uh, building this calculator, and I have another piece. I actually want to have a clear function, so let's go to Design. And so here's my clear button right here, and so whenever I press that, I actually want whatever number I have in this to be cleared, and let's go ahead and take a look how that clear function might work. So I have some code up here at the top, and uh, let's just uncomment that. And what I'm going to do is take that text box, which is called my text is, and just reset the number zero in that box. Then I'm going to take my primary number and set it to zero, and my next number and set it to zero. So if I've been doing some calculation, I want to clear it. I should actually change all the values back to zero as well. So if you go back to Design View and you click on this text box, then we go to Windows Properties in Flash Builder. See in the properties panel, there is the ID on that box. One more thing I need to talk about, if I click on the button, let's go on down to the button itself. And in that button, I do have a click handler that's called cleared function. Now that came from some copied code. And, and if I roll over that and hold down the control key and click on it, it takes me to the method I just created. So uh, let's go on and continue putting in more code and fixing this example. Notice I have another error in my application as well right here, and it's in the square root. Why do I have problems with the square root? Because I brought the original uh, data generator or auto generated code value text input dot five into uh, the application. That was part of the forms that I deleted. So I actually need to put a number in there. And what number do I need to use? Of course, is the primary number. That's going to be the first number I enter. Then I'll hit the uh, take the square root, and then that. Uh, will be replaced into this method and the switch case and it will take my square root for me. So that's pretty much how that works. Let's copy that in there. Now that error should go away and it does. And you can see in my switch case in each example if I'm adding, subtracting, dividing, multiplying, whatever I have my primary number and then I have my next number and that's the next number I input. So let's go back and add a little bit more code and once again, you see all those errors right there that have been generated. All those are going to go away as I begin copying the functions that correspond to each one of these click values into place. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to add all the button code. So if we go back to design view, you see we have all these buttons, but there's no code attached to them. That's why we're getting all that error. Let's go and paste that code in right now and explain how that works. So below my switch case, I'm just going to open up some spaces here. We can put a little comment in here and go button code. And let's paste it in. So for example, let's discuss the uh, calculator one uh, button when you click that button. So if you go back to design view and you click the one button, then you go to source view that will highlight the one and roll over a click. That takes me to the button that will be clicked. So when I click that button, this method is fired. And the first thing this method does is checks to see if the text is zero or if the true button has been clicked. Now if the text is zero, what that means is that I'm uh, at an initial state. I'm in a cleared state and the first number will be my primary number. And so what that does is sets that, sets that text is box to 1. Then the opt to false. Or else I'm going to add to the text is uh, box. So what that means is it's not 0 and I'm just going to add a number to that box. Uh, same thing for example if I clicked on 2 it checks is there a 0 there or is that true? And if it's true, what it's going to do is going to uh, put a 2 in that box and set opt to false. But if it's not true, it's going to just plus equal that number. Now, why am I plus equaling the number? That's a good question. What I want to do is when I plus equal the number is just add more to it. And what I'm saying is I'm in the first spot or the second spot. I'm still just adding to the number. Now, let's run the calculator and show you what I mean by that. So I'm running my calculator right here. And you can see it is in 3D. I have rotated it a little bit. And when I start adding numbers, if that number is not zero and if the op button hasn't been clicked, I want to keep adding numbers. So I want to, in a sense, create. So I want to increase the, the length of the string. So I can clear that. And say so I did that. But what if I hit one of these flags like multiply? Then what I want to do is just add a new number. You see that? And then I set equals and it does the application and it does the multiplication for me. So that's how the application works. Just keep that in mind. Uh, if it didn't, if it wasn't clear, review the video, go through the code, and it'll make a lot of sense to you. So I want to put four more of these in uh, the uh, button place. I'll go above the switch case and do that. So let's go and click and paste. And I have four methods here, and it's the plus, minus, multiply, and divide. And if we take a look at the plus method, for example, that sets the math case. So when I click on the plus button, the math case is set to zero, and the opt is set to true, which means I've clicked there. And then it takes the 
text from that text box and sets it into the primary number. So it sets that text as the primary number. That's what's going to be sent to my server. Same thing if I hit minus or uh, multiplication or divide. I set the switch case number. I set the op equal to true. And then I set the number that's in the text box to the primary number. Note I have to actually change its type. I strict typed it to a number, so a primary number has to be a number. If I tried uh, to do this without the uh, number in there, I would actually gotten an error because it's a string and it has to talk to a number. So ActionScript is not like PHP. It's not going to accept uh, uh, mixed cases. Let's say so. If I go ahead and hit the save button, you're going to see what happens is all my uh, errors will, in a sense, go away. And so I know, have no more errors, but I'm not done with the program yet. There's yet four more statements I need in here. So let's go ahead and paste those in and discuss those statements as well. And those four statements are used for my call responders. I actually need to put something in here so when I click on this, I actually receive that data back from the server. And I can actually just open this up a little bit and generate some stub codes. If I click, hit a click and go start typing in results and click on that and return, and then return again, I generate, automatically generate the add handler. Now add handler needs a little bit of code. We're going to show you what that is. But let me show you where that code's been automatically generated. Just right here at the bottom. So whenever code is automatically generated, it gets stuck in the bottom right here. Now I already have these four statements. So I'm actually not going to use this. I'm going to go ahead and paste them up above so they make sense to us. So let's come along here and paste all these in. And let's discuss the first results handler. So what happens here is I'm going to take that results. And I'm actually going to stick it into the primary number. And I'm going to put that primary number, turn it back to a string, and stick it to the text box. And what that is, that's my answer. So why did I stick it in the primary number? So I can do another operation on it right away if I want to. So if I wanted to keep doing plus and equal, plus and equal, I could keep adding to that number. But that primary number and the secondary number or next number are used basically to move these, this data around with that text box. And you can see how that all works. And so now there's actually four more of these operations that I've created here. And now I'm ready to get my calculator working. So let's go back and fix our call responders. We only have one of them in there now, and that is the add handler right there. Let's go ahead and put the rest of them in and paste those in. And so I actually have my four. But I have one more, and that is the um, square root. Kind of saving that to the end so I can actually show you how to start from scratch and get this working. But let's go ahead and run the code. Let's go ahead and hit the Control button and run. Update the calculator. And you see now, if I go 9 divided by 6, there's my answer. So everything's working really well. I mean, this is fantastic, and it's all pinging back and coming back from the PHP server. But what I want to do now is I actually want to put that one more button in there, that square root button. So let's do that now. Let's go back to our interface. And I'm just going to copy a button. Let's copy one of these buttons. It doesn't matter which one. We'll just go ahead and uh, Control-C, Control-V, and let's move this over. And square root is actually below in the... Uh, Windows calculator. So we move this down to here and move it over just a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to double click on here and hit square root. S Q or S Q R T. Okay, and that's too small, so I just need three letters S Q T for square root. All right, so I know whenever I hit this button, I'm going to run the square root method and take the square root of a number. So let's go back to source. And now I have that button down here, but I don't have any handler that goes along with it. So here's the button I made a copy of, and it actually gave it the ID square zero. I don't want that because it's not a uh, zero. It just did that because it knew it had been uh, uh, come from the square root, so I'll just call that square root. okay? And then I have a little click handler here, and that goes divide. I actually don't want to divide click handler. So let's go ahead and just auto-generate some click handler code. The way you do that is just go back here, hit a space, hit the click, return, and return it automatically generated that, that click handler for that square root for me, which will go right here. okay? So I want to go ahead and cut this and paste this above with the rest of the code. So let's paste that where it should go. And above this, I have the results for the call responder uh, for the subtraction. And it's very similar. I'm just going to copy this code right here, Control-C, and that's Control-V. And the only difference here is basically this name right here that tells me that the primary number is coming from the square root. So let's go down and grab that number. And that name is square root results. I'm going to copy that, and then I'm going to paste that in for that uh, name right there. And now I'm ready to go. Let's see if square root works. So now let's run our code and see if it works. 
So now let's test our square root method. Let's go ahead and put 25 in the text box and hit square root and then hit equals and we get 5. So everything's just working fantastic. But notice that the calculator actually rotated back minus 10 degrees. So our calculator is now in 3D because 3D is native to a flash builder. Let's see how we did that. So we're going to get out of the method here. And what I've done, I've actually created another method. It's called an application complete method. And it just takes the name of our C panel, the panel that holds all our buttons, and concatenates and says, puts on it a uh, rotation X. Now that rotation actually is an inherited quality of the panel class. If it dot, you see all the partial methods come up. Rotation is one. And I'm just going to move it back minus 10 degrees. So basically, when I create my application, here's my application tag. What I do, I have this creation complete method, and in that, I have this application creation handler, and that runs first when the program starts up, which rotates that calculator back uh, 10 degrees. So, hey, let's run it one more time. And there you have it, a PHP calculator in 3D. So you can't beat that. And I know we covered a lot of ground here. Go back and watch the video. We're going to be moving on with databases next time. Thanks for listening. This was Mike Lively.